Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we are doing the best of Chanel 2022. We are focusing on their new releases from this year and my favorite products from those collections. But before we go any further, let's take a second to grab our iced coffee or a hot coffee. Let's take a sip and let's get started. For the video, instead of going through season by season, I'm going to go through categories like eyeshadows, foundations, whatever. And I'm going to start with nail polish and one of the nail colors that I'm wearing. So these are the nail polishes that came out uh, towards the end of this year in the fall. And this was very much like 90s inspired with a lot of beautiful nudes. It came with accompanying nail polishes or accompanying lipsticks too. So this one here is Impulsion and this is what I've been wearing on my nails for several days. It's a beautiful color and I do find that it has a nice wear to it. I would say a whole week it stays quite intact. So this one here was beautiful. Um, but this one here, Emotion 945, I got so much use out of it when I purchased it. I just, I rewore it so many times. It's such a beautiful color. It's kind of a nude, but it it has color to it. I don't like a nude nail polish that just looks like my skin tone. This has a bit of color to it, so I wore it so many times. It was one of those items that once I purchased it, I just kept rewearing it nonstop. And then this one here, 947 Desire or Désir so pretty it looks similar to rouge noir but it is different and what's nice is that if you like a really dark nail polish but you want something that has a little something different it's not just pure black it is just such a beautiful color it's really gorgeous for the holiday season and for the winter months i've been wearing this one a lot as well and then I also picked up three other colors this year that are the complete opposite of the shade range that I showed you. I, ha I have colors for colder and summer months. So the first one here, Riviera. This came out in spring, summer of this year, which was in January. And it was all inspired by the Mediterranean and the sun and the beach. And I love white nail polish. I love pastels. And this beautiful pastel yellow is so pretty. I just wore it. I think last week or the week before and i really love it it's a gorgeous color riviera is what it's called it's number 915 riviera and then i think these two came out in the summer with the les beige we have 935 cc green which is a really beautiful pastel green again if you love a pastel a white off-white for the summer months you would love cc green and then last but not least for nail polish, we have Blanc Ecume 927. This was definitely for the Les Beige collection. And this is a sort of off-white. It's a white. It's not quite a white out intensity, but it is very white. And it's also quite opaque. I love just like a pure white opaque nail polish. I don't like when it's just like a light shift it's just not my taste because sometimes when they come out with a white nail polish it's really just a pearlescent top coat and that's just not really for me so let's move on to lips in january chanel released a new range called the chanel rouge coco balm and this is the shade 914 natural charm i love the white and gold it's so fresh it gives me summer vibes miami heat the mediterranean it's gorgeous and this is definitely a lip balm with lots of tint do not approach this thinking this is going to be a lipstick it's really a balm with tint so if you're wearing a nude lip color you can keep this around and then reapply this when you want to add moisture and revive your lip color and this one is really pretty they have other shades available as well and then for the lipsticks i stuck well my, my favorites are rouge allure rouge allure velvet they came out with some other lip formulas this year that hmm, didn't really work for me not as much as these ones here so the first one is the rouge allure velvet this is a bullet lipstick here it has a star on top because this was part of the well, it came out with a spring-summer release this year, and this is 118 Bois de Rose Astral. They had this series of lipsticks with these stars on top that were all about the galaxy or astral inspiration. 
And so this is a nudie rosewood and the velvet formula is a bullet lipstick that's a bit more matte. So this is this color here. It's just really pretty, sort of like an everyday nudie rosewood. Now when they launched these 90s supermodel nudes, they also had these 90s supermodel nude lipsticks in the Rouge Allure, which is just the classic bullet like this with the top that opens like that. And these are all satin lipsticks that give you a perfect nude for every skin tone and the shade range is phenomenal. I loved this collection when it came out. It was just, it was so beautiful. To me, it just screamed Karl Lagerfeld in the 90s. That's what it reminded me of. I just loved the entire aesthetic and I love the shades that I got. I got three shades. I got 196 at Demi Mou. Now they also had some darker colors too if you wanted to go for berries, but I kind of wanted lighter everyday colors. This one's 196 right here. And this is what it looks like. Just a classic satin bullet in a beautiful gold tube. Stunning. Then we have 198 Nuance or Nuance. 198 is what I'm wearing today. Today I'm wearing a mixture of 198 here and 211 Subtle. This is 211. The last three here, as you can see, have a little bit of moisture and shine to them, which actually makes them incredibly comfortable to wear. I would say that this is probably one of my favorite lip formulas from the brand because it's long wearing and also incredibly comfortable. So I'm wearing a combination here of this one and this one, and it just creates a really beautiful pout. Before we move on from the lip category, I almost forgot something. Well, this is technically a lip and cheek, so I wasn't totally off here, but this was part of the number one release. And this is the shade number two, Healthy Pink. So this is technically a lip and cheek balm, so you can use it on your lips or you can apply some as blush. This is the best Your Lip But Better in a pink. It's so, like, look at this. Ugh, look at this. It's so pretty. So sometimes I will use this as a treatment. So if I'm doing my makeup, I'll put this on first very generously. And then by the time I do my makeup, I will maybe wipe off some of the buttery excess or sometimes I wear it as a lip color on its own because it's just, it's so pretty. I mean, come on, it's so pretty. I love a nude lipstick. I didn't think that I used to, like I used to think that I didn't like a nude lipstick. I was wrong, <laughs> I clearly do, it's just so pretty. And I bought another one that's more of a red. I like it, but I don't love it as much as healthy pink. Let's move on to complexion. So one item I got here is a new primer. This is the Glowing Makeup Primer, Moisturizing and Plumping. And what's nice about this is the texture looks and feels like a thick moisturizer. And I'm wearing a little bit today underneath my makeup. And it actually does work. Like if you want something that's going to give you an extra barrier of moisture and hydration and plump your skin like if you have fine lines dry skin if you live in harsh climate if you want something to just plump up and make your skin look a little bit juicier this is a gorgeous primer and it has a really light fresh fruity scent and what's gorgeous is that it really just feels like this cocooning buttery moisturizing moisturizer in a way so if you just want to add more hydration before you go into foundation, this is a good primer. I also loved this Baume Essentiel in Ensoleillé. This is a stick highlighter, but Ensoleillé has a little bit of peachy color to it. Not a lot, like you can see it has peach here, but it's not the same thing as a blush. You can, what I do is I use it underneath foundation, so I basically apply it everywhere I would apply a highlighter and then I apply my complexion products, which sort of just gives you like a really natural glass skin effect. And you can go in with a peachy coral blush on top if you want to, just to enhance the color. But if you use a different blush color, it'll be fine. It's not going to interfere. How I often wear this is I go into this layer first, and then I go into this gorgeous blush here from the beginning of the year. This is called Pache Rosé, which is like a peachy rose. And this is the blush that I'm wearing today. So, so gorgeous, absolutely stunning. 
it looks like it's going to be very intense. It looks like it's going to be very like a pumpkin orange, but it's really beautiful. I would say that the swatch here looks more intense. So this is the swatch on the back of my hand and this is the swatch on my face here. It's one of those blushes that is an illuminating blush. I think it's even called that. It's called Blush Lumiere Illuminating Blush Powder. So it has some, ooh, I almost dropped it. It has some illuminating highlighter qualities, but it's not like a chunky glitter. It's, it isn't obnoxious. It's just very luminous and beautiful. I really think that they should make this one permanent because it's so pretty. Moving on to the Jumbo Maxi Oversized Powders here. So here in Canada, they released a illuminating oversized powder, which is a fancy word for a highlighter. And this is the shade Soft Peach. It is so pretty. This highlighter looks and feels and wears just like a beautiful, finely milled illuminating powder. It's what I'm wearing today. It doesn't have like glitter to it. It's just almost more like a brightening illuminating powder. And I think it was only released in Canada and maybe other countries. It didn't come to the US. I don't remember where it came out in Europe, but not everywhere. It was extremely confusing. There was a lot of confusion going on. I don't know what happened. I don't know why it wasn't available everywhere. I suspect perhaps it will be released in the new year with the Le Beige and be called something else. I, I don't know. I really don't know because it is quite nice. And there were a few shades available, but I got the soft peach. And then there was also accompanying bronzers, which I believe was worldwide and just for whatever reason, Canada got the highlighters all on our own. So these are the bronzers here, oops. And if you look closely, you can see that the embossing here actually looks like mini cases of the Le Beige bronzers, which is so extra, I love it. This is the shade Deep Sun Bath. And so I'm wearing both of these powders today on my cheeks. I've really grown to really love the Le Beige releases. At first I wasn't super into them for some reason, but I actually like them quite a bit now. And I like that they're not super huge collections. They tend to be more precise and have like, be more focused on complexion, like bronzers, powders, maybe a nail polish or two, but they're more precise, which I really like. And I like the whole aesthetic of the Le Beige collections. Moving on, we have the new Chanel Complexion Touch. This is an, an addition to the Water Fresh Tint. So the Water Fresh Tint came out a few years ago and it's really a more sheer, not invisible, but very, very lightweight complexion product. And the Complexion Touch has three times the amount of pigments. It's about 60% water still. So it's like a glass of water for your complexion but with more pigments. And I have two shades. I have B40 and then B30. So it's impossible to take a good photo or video of these products here. So here's what they look like. And you can tell that I'm using B40 a bit more. I'm wearing B40 today as my complexion. And what I do is I use B30, the lighter color, as concealer. If you have dry skin, if you have crepey under eyes, if you just perpetually have dry under eye area, whatever concealer you use always looks cakey and dry. Try this one here, the Complexion Touch in a lighter shade for concealer because it's 60% water. It's literally a glass of water for your under eye, but it has a lot of pigments in it. And when you crush them up, you actually do get a lot of coverage. So it's been really great. And I love it either way as a full complexion product or as concealer. Today, I just went in for complexion and I think it gives you very, very natural looking skin, but it almost provides like a sort of Instagram blur filter. Everything looks blurred, everything looks refined. You can still see some beauty spots, but it just looks really beautiful. And it does have a little bit of a luminous finish. I do have a bit of the highlighter over top, but I think it's really gorgeous. Moving on to a new foundation from the brand. This is the Revitalizing Red Camellia Number no. 1, and I wear the shade B40. Number 1 Red Camellia came out at the beginning of this year, and this really took me by surprise because I think it's probably one of my favorite foundations from the brand. It's hard to say because I, I really love Complexion Touch, but I also really love this Number no. 1 foundation because it's 
it offers it's more covering than the complexion touch so if i want something with more coverage i'm going into this foundation here but at the same time the finish is so natural it isn't too glowy where you look almost greasy but it isn't drying at the same time it's like a beautiful your skin but better in a very very natural lightweight finish it offers more coverage but it never feels cakey or drying it's just it's a great foundation i really really love it i think it's wonderful and arguably one of my favorite concealers ever i mean i still love the clé de peau concealer i still do but this one here no the chanel sublimage concealer this is part sublimage skincare and part makeup i use the shade 32 and that's what i'm wearing today so this is incredibly expensive it has a huge price tag because like i said it's part skincare and part makeup the skincare is meant to be blurring hydrating smoothing and brightening and it actually works i think it's the best concealer I've ever tried. I know I'm really, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry because it is so expensive, but it does everything it says it's going to do. So yeah, like everything is blurred, everything is brightened, everything looks awakened, everything looks plump, and it does not crease at all. Like once you blend it out, that's it. You set it, like you don't even have to set it. You blend it and then you forget it, that's it. You don't have to uh, apply a powder. You don't have to go like this midday. You just do your makeup and forget that it's even there. So yeah, unfortunately it's worth the money. Let's move on to eyeshadows. Now I have several here somehow. I don't know how I can have so much makeup and still have favorites, but I do. And I'm talking about what I'm wearing today on my eyes. And this is the Ombre Lunaire lunar uh, shadows this is part of the holiday release this year this palette had some mixed reviews i understand it's incredibly warm i am wearing hmm, a little bit of everything actually on my eyes today and it is really warm it's more golden on some people it turns a bit orange so it's not for everyone but i love the finish it's very very soft it's very soft very buildable and it reminds me a lot of a, a classic chanel palette that's just more subtle and more soft it needs a bit of work to build up which you know a lot of classic chanel clients tend to have more mature eyelids and so they don't want something that's like super like blah in your face they want something a bit softer and so i understand this palette here number 58 intensity intensity this one i love so much i got so much use out of this palette here absolutely stunning i love the mixture of the dark plum I love the gold. I love the top. It's giving me a bit more cool. This one here is like a taupe slate lilac. We have a lighter, softer, slightly more cool purple here. It's so pretty. You know, Chanel really has been lacking in purple shadows. And so I was so thrilled to see this one here. And I got so much use out of it when it first came out. I'm still using it, obviously. But we all know that when something first comes out, it's like the brand new toy. So we keep playing with it all the time. And I loved this palette so much. Another palette that I got lots of pleasure from when it first launched and still continue to this day is the Mediterranean palette, 747 Mediterranean. So this one came out with the spring summer launch. This one, again, I think some people didn't enjoy it as much because it is very soft. You do get some lighter colors, but it's very, very soft. And this, I would say, is ethereal. It's all about light colors, having a beautiful light look. If you imagine the beach and the sand specifically and seeing the warm rays of the sun reflecting on the granules of sand, that's what you're supposed to see here. And I see it and I get it. it may not be for everyone, but it was for me. Let's move on to the tweeds. Oh my goodness, what? An anticipated release I think we talked about this for like two years before we actually saw it and so of course like a crazy person I picked up all four I had the first one here I so first of all I love that they come with their own colorful pouches love that this one here is brun et rose which means brown and rose or brown and pink this is a very soft subtle buildable natural look this is just so pretty this to me screams Paris in the spring 
it's soft, you're going to look like you're wearing makeup, but it's not too obvious, it's not too flashy, it's just such a beautiful palette. And I was surprised with this one here because at first I was like, meh, you know, it's one of those palettes that perhaps doesn't look that thrilling in the pan, but as you're wearing it, it looks gorgeous. Now we have Tweed Crivre, which I think was a lot of people's favorites, and I understand because this one here, it's giving you copper, warm, dark chocolatey brown dreams. It's a bit of the JLo glow. You do have options to go into more JLo glow-esque shadows, but it's just very pretty. This one here is much darker and has uh, more opacity, so it could be for people who want more intense eyeshadow looks. Now, this one here, Tweed Fauve, was the one that really surprised me. This was the one that I was like, meh, I don't know about that one, like meh, very solid meh at first, but I was really blown away with the payoff and the color story. The color story was actually what threw me off at first because I was seeing orange and plums and I was like, how am I supposed to wear this? But this is giving me pumpkin spice, everything nice, New England in the fall, and the color payoff is really gorgeous. The the shadows actually work really well together. When you look at this, you actually do see a lot of fall foliage colors. So it makes sense they match these together. It's incredibly versatile. I think it has the most interesting color story of all of the, I think all of the palettes that we talked about today, actually. I was gonna say it's the most interesting color story for the tweeds, which is true, but I think it might be the most interesting color story in the entire video. And then last but not least, from the tweeds, we have the Tweed Pourpre, the purple palette. This one here, I think, was a bit polemical. A lot of people did not enjoy it, but I think, again, this is a palette that is for the quintessential Chanel client who has more mature eyelids and doesn't want a purple that's like super flashy and tacky. They want something softer, more buildable, and this is what you get. You get purples and pinks. This also is Paris in the spring. It's giving me florals for spring. I know florals for spring is not very groundbreaking, but I don't care. It's a classic and it works for a reason. Last but not least, we have fragrances or bath body products. First up is the Chanel Paris Paris. This is part of the, or a new addition to Les Eaux. We have Paris Venise, Paris Dimbourg, Paris Deauville, etc. And this, they decided to stay local with Paris Paris. And this perfume, it is the nicest rose scent on the market, I think. You know, when you think of roses, you think, oof, that's gonna be a little bit mature, maybe. Maybe a bit too heavy. No, it's really, a light rose scent. It smells like it looks, it's pink. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's a pink bottle. It smells hyper feminine. It has rose, but a bit of musk. And it's just, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous perfume. I think I'm gonna go ahead and spray some on actually, excuse me. And then they also came out with a scented body lotion for Paris Paris. So I got the scented body lotion and the perfume. You can layer it up and just smell very decadent if you feel like it. I think I might put this in my bathroom so I can give myself a nice treatment tonight. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this year they also added a bunch of shower gels and scented body lotions to the entire Les Eaux collection. So if you like some of the other perfumes from the brand, you can actually treat yourself with scented shower gels and body lotions. And then for whatever reason, this year became the year of like body oils and body gels for me personally. I started with one and I don't seem to be able to stop myself. I don't know what's going on. It started with the Les Beige this summer. This is the Les Beige Scented Body Oil. It's the illuminating oil for face, body, and hair. I only use it for my body. Maybe when my hair is straight, I can apply some, but... Oh, it smells beautiful. It smells light, and I... Look at this. It looks like sand. It looks like sand. You know when you're walking on the beach and the sand is wet? and you push your toes on the wet sand and you get all those little bubbles, this is what it looks like. It's absolutely stunning. I love it. It's so gorgeous and you can apply it everywhere. So I do it after the, the shower. You know like the shower because not all showers are created equal. The shower where I actually wash my hair, I exfoliate, I shave, I do all the things. Afterwards, I go in with one of these, like I moisturize head to toe, and then I seal it all in with one of these body oils. Oof, it's gorgeous. I also got the number five body oil uh, during the holiday season, and this, again, look at this. 
and I actually am using these quite a bit, seeing me use these in real time. It's just so pretty and it actually smells lovely. It's not too strong. Sometimes number five can be a bit harsh. It has a little bit of that aldehydic, soft baby powder, soapy quality, but in a fresh, soft, almost bubblegum way, which I really enjoy. And then last but not least, I got the Mademoiselle body gel. So the first two are body oils. This is a gel, so it's not oily in texture, it's a gel. And this is the pearly body gel. This one here is more of a rose gold. It has more pink in it. The texture is a bit different. Again, it's a gel, it's not an oil. So if you're concerned about it being oily or anything like that, maybe Mademoiselle is for you. And listen, if you like Mademoiselle, you're gonna love this. Some people were asking like if they should get it or not, but like, you know for yourself, you know your budget, you know what your collection is like, but if you like Mademoiselle, you're going to love the body gel. All right, guys, I think that is it for today's video. These are the best releases of Chanel 2022, in my opinion, the best products, the best items. These were my favorites. They had a lot of releases this year that I picked up apparently, but these were my favorites and I cannot wait to hear from you in the comments. Please let me know what were some of your favorites, especially if you had favorites that I did not mention today. I would love to hear from you. If you're not aware, I have an online beauty consulting service. It's a one-on-one -on -one video chat where you get to pick my brain about any beauty question you have. So whether you need a fresh set of eyes on your makeup kit or you need advice purchasing some new makeup, go ahead and book a session today. So I think that's all I have for you guys for today. Make sure that you're subscribed and have your notifications set to on because I have a lot of Chanel related content on my channel and other luxury beauty releases. So I think you would be interested in that. But anyway, that's all I have for you guys for today. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a beautiful day and I'll see you next time. Bye.